with a round of applause. Join me as we welcome God's choice servant, my father, Apostle Michael Orobo. A generation of women that know the presence, that stays in the presence, and from the presence, they command change. You can stay in the presence, and even your husband knows that he will fulfill purpose. Your husband, he just knows. You can stay in the presence, and your sons will know they can't misbehave. They, you don't need to sit down, wake them up by 5 a.m. in the morning, and begin to give them rules of life. It was never recorded that Hannah sat somewhere in the morning and is telling him, Avoid women, uh, read your book, go to church. Before Samuel came, the contract concluded on the altar. So when he came, he had no choice, he has to walk in it. Because before he came, he was already dedicated. You, 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 don't, you can't change your mind. It's too late. I've thought before that some of us would not have been preaching. The last thing I want to do is to hold the microphone and preach. Those days when I go to church, I sit at the back. My mom will laugh. He say, you. <laughs> I've given you up before you came. You have no choice. I gave you up long before you came. When they talk about me, say, leave him. That's a prophet. Me, prophet. I had many ideas. I was creative about things. There were many things in my head. But I didn't know that a spirit was watching over me. He was just waiting for the time appointed of the father. Because a contract took place without my consent. And because I came from her loins, I could not change the things that she uttered. And when I came of age, the finger of God for he found me. And when he put his hand on me, the hand was too heavy. Even though I didn't want to, I couldn't do otherwise. How can your own son be wayward? Because you don't know the author. How can your daughter be looking for who to marry? The destiny that you have already written with God and signed with tears. How can that destiny be compromised? How can your husband womanize and run around? The same husband that before he came, God showed you on the altar. The same husband whose leg was manipulated by the Holy Ghost to find you. He didn't know why he came to Abuja. He thought he came to do a business pro business or to run a contract. And then God dragged him until he came to find you at that corner where you were sitting. How can that husband now leave you and go to Rome about? As if you didn't beget him on the altar. Why do you think you are called mothers? Because you bet everything you have. And if it came from you, it is yours. And then somebody said they took my husband. Which your husband? How can they take him? The one you betted before you married. But people don't see God. So they don't enter authority levels. Every mother is beyond the home. The day you became a mother, you are not just a mother of a home. You became a mother of all the sons in that neighborhood. You became a mother of that territory. You became a responsible owner and watcher over that whole environment. Everywhere your son can go to, you own that place. Because you are the one, he said, the prayer of your parents shall be a canopy, a covering over you, even when you are in a strange land. But you cannot walk in such power unless by prayer you have been able to forgo everything to seek God. And when you find him, everything that is in God becomes yours. Capacity in prayer. This is why you are travelers. This is why you have a womb. To bet things into the natural. There are too many things that are still in the spirit. Most of us are yet to begin to born. I know you have a daughter. But you have not begun to bet things yet. Until from the altar. Things begin to come out of your spirit. Things begin to come out of your spirit. Things begin to come out of your spirit. That is where true power is. That's what we call capacity in prayer. Yeah. Ah ha ha 
altar is beckoning on you. There are many things waiting for you to bet. The prayer altar is calling on you. There are many homes that are waiting deliverance because you have not risen. There are many marriages are waiting deliverance because you have not risen. There are many breakthroughs in territories that are not possible because you have not risen. If there is one language a woman should know, it should be a language of prayer. Because a woman by nature is a begetter. As soon as Zion traveled, she brought forth her children. You are natural mothers. And so the heritage of Zion, to a very large degree, awaits your travail. Now, when these two things begin to happen, I have about four of them, but because of time, I will stop. When these two things begin to happen, then you begin to enter the realms of prayers. And the first realm of prayer is what we call stamina. You see, when you have not understood this, you will not understand what spiritual stamina is. Stamina in the place of prayer is not exercising your will. Stamina in the place of prayer is mastery in yielding to the Holy Spirit. So you begin to function by the energy of the Holy Spirit. So you find somebody that was weak suddenly goes to pray and then the person is there for 10 hours. You who want to exercise your will, you can come there and insist. That's beautiful. But it's beyond it. Because that person praying by yieldedness, when he, he or she is done praying, he will become stronger. You who exercise your will, when you are done praying, you will be weak. Because you were functioning by ATP. But you cannot understand spiritual stamina until these two things I shared. You have put it to work until it has become natural with you. In stamina, the Holy Ghost comes into you and mantles you. That is the authority you have that when you look at people, you'll see them beyond what they look like. A lady can come to your, to your house. Her hair is fully tied. Her neck is covered as if she wants to strangle herself. And her skirt is long to the floor. But when you see her, you'll see Jezebel. You'll know her ambition. The reason is because you are not judging by the sight of the eyes. You are judging by the spirit that have saturated you. So beyond the disguise, you can tell her intention. That's why when your husband wants to go out, you can tell him, don't go out today. Don't go out. Don't go out today. If, it, if he refuses, after two, three times, he will now understand that when my wife says, don't go out, don't go out. Because my wife goes ahead of me in prayer. And then when you are going somewhere as a man, even if your wife were not conscious, you will tell her to say something. Because everything she says becomes the outcome of that outing. Because she has become the prophet that guides your journey. That's when women truly begin to gain rank. Because they have yielded to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost has mantled them. And when the Holy Ghost mantles them, they become the compass for the navigation of the home. When they say women are the builders of the home, it's not by sitting everybody down and advising them. Is by going ahead of the home in the spirit. When the husband is laboring, the woman is going ahead of, her, of him. The things that the husband will naturally negate, they are the things the woman does naturally. I can tell you by experience that built into a woman is endurance. If I were to be pregnant for one week, <laughs> Do 
the most enduring man cannot carry pregnancy for two months. The, the design of the woman all reveals her spiritual propensities. That means what a man cannot sit on for one week, a woman can sit on it for one year. That's why women do gossip a lot and keep malice because they are incubators. When you offend them, they can be on that matter for one year. But the man is not an incubator. He quarrels and he forgets about it. The woman will be there. He will come back two weeks later and say, that thing you did, I told you. You thought it has been settled. And then one month later, something happened. He said, this is the same thing you did the last time. And the man wants to... The woman is functioning like that because she has not entered her office as an intercessor. When she enters her office as an intercessor, that's how she will sit on the matters of the home. And she will insist until those things are sorted out. It's called stamina. That's why every time a great man is about to appear in scripture, the angel will leave the man and go and tell the woman. Because if he tells the man, he will go and preach about it and forget. But when he told Manoah's wife, he said, eat no strong drink, drink no strong drink, and let no razor come upon his head, for he shall be a Nazarite unto the Lord. The woman was there for nine months. We didn't remember about the man. Even when the angel came the second time, the man forgot. Because there is no stamina. He doesn't understand how to yield. Even in the marriage equation, you are the one commanded to submit. Because yieldedness is a natural proponent that the Holy Ghost brings into you as you activate your life in the Spirit. And on the strength of that yieldedness, you can yield to the Holy Spirit and begin to incubate on the purpose of that marriage until it finds expression. When children rises, it's because their mothers were warriors. When families succeed, it's because their mother, the, the, the woman of the house, is an intercessor. When you see a man walking in favor, it's because there's an engine room that you don't see. It is the woman that has the stamina in the home. Every home where children are wayward, there was a problem with the mother. Every home where children are great, then you find a great intercessor. She may not say it, but even the children know. And every time sons are to give testimonies, they may respect their father, but you will know where their allegiance lie because they know who bettered them. It's a grace called stamina that every woman has the capacity to incubate like a hen. The egg can be formed and the hen will sit on it. If the hen stands up before the time, the egg will be destroyed. It will no longer be an egg and it will not grow into a chick. That's the problem of many children in society because their mothers never built stamina. God told you that your son will be great. You told everybody, but you didn't bet it on the altar. And then after a while, when the star of your son begins to shine, the demons see it. And instead of you to have covered them in the place of prayer, you didn't develop stamina. And so because there was no covering over that child, that child becomes vulnerable. But when the borders begin to rise, there will be mothers in Israel. Mothers that know the purposes of God and the ordinations of God for a generation. And they will not just preach it, but they will sit on it until it is born. We are preaching revival today, but I can tell you by visions and by the privilege of ordination that most of the revivals, dimensions of the revival we will see, they will break out of women's prayer closets. When revival came to Israel through Samuel, it was a business between Hannah and God. When revival came to Israel through Samson, it was a business between an angel and Manoah's wife. When Jesus showed up, it was a business between Hannah, the prophetess, and the Holy Spirit. Most revivers have their root with women that have built stamina. They know how to yield to the Holy Spirit. Why do you think when a woman is offended, she begins to cry? Because all she knows to do is to pour her heart to God. And in pouring her heart to God, there is a, a spiritual component that is built on her inside. It's called spiritual stamina. Because that is where, that, through that traveling, that bettings take place. May your womb in the spirit not be useless while you are on the face of the earth. Have you not noticed? That a woman can sit in one spot and gossip for the whole day. There is something in her spirit. It's called stamina. 
But that stamina must be converted through prayer until it becomes a gate for betting. When purposes are born, it's because women have built stamina in the spirit. A woman does not strive and say, I want to be known. I want to be the preacher. A woman can come to church. She's comfortable sitting by her husband's side. If her husband is doing well, she's full of joy. There are those God has put his hand upon that lead generation. But most of them, they want to do their job at the back. Because there is something about incubation that is in their spirit. It's called stamina. As you begin to build capacity, the first thing you will notice is that stamina will come to your spirit. And sometimes you will tell your husband, let's pray. After 30 minutes, he's already snoring. But you can be there at 4 a.m. in the morning. And you can remember everything that needs to be addressed because stamina has come. When that begins to happen, you have begun to journey in the realms of prayer. And when you journey beyond stamina, the second realm of prayer is called ascension. In ascension, what happens to you is that those cries that have gone to heaven, you will begin to receive feedback from heaven. Once upon a time, you prayed for three weeks and all you had was that the body was lifted and suddenly, as you keep developing stamina, a point comes where when you pray, you go to sleep and you see a vision. Ascension has come. A point comes when you pray, an angel walks into your room. Ascension has come. A point comes when you pray, the Holy Ghost begins to talk to you about the churches in Abuja. And you are asking yourself, I'm not a prophet, a prophetess. I'm not an apostle. Why are you telling me about the churches? Because the true business is on the altar, not on the pulpit. When ascensions begin to take place, you begin to receive feedback from heaven. In the book of Hebrews chapter 11, it says women receive their dead back to life. That means the things that time gave up on. Because this woman can join into eternity. They can superimpose that dimension into time. And when you think something has failed, call a woman. Because through ascension, she will be able to bring divine feedbacks. There are many of you here that as you begin to pray, you will naturally begin to ascend in the spirit. And you will know the future of your husband, the future of your children, the future of your family, the future of your territory. Because God will begin to entrust you with the powers to see beyond the now. It is called ascension in the spirit. It's a realm of encounter that people enter through prayer. Because prayer is not just about answered prayers or answers to what you demand. Prayer is about entering into the realm of God and trafficking in that dimension. In Jeremiah 33 verse 3, it says, Call unto me and I will answer. And then after answering, it went to another level. It said, I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. That is what we call ascension. That somebody begins to pray and after God answers him, God says, wait. The prayer doesn't end with answer. There are things I want to show you now. And suddenly that person shows up and that person becomes a divine router that brings the purposes of God to bear in a family and in a territory because ascension has taken place. Now, well, let me tell you something. Many times, when God wants to do great things, he looks for people that don't look like it. Because when he carries a man who looks like it, he will have something to boast in and say, it's because I'm educated. Most of the women today that are being marginalized, they are the hope of tomorrow. You look at them, you think they are useless. Their husband makes them feel as if they are nothing. Just begin to pray. When you pray for a while, you will discover that not just your home, your territory will become answerable to you. And the things God will begin to do through you, they will tell your husband about you and your husband will be shocked. You mean my wife? How is that possible? You have entered ascension. He may not discover it, but the Holy Ghost has taken you there. And you will wake up and you say, I dreamt today and this is what I saw. And your husband will think it's a dream. But those who know that you are now a gate will say, when that woman dreams, better take it serious. Because it's a feedback system from heaven. 
is an ascension dimension and it's available for women in this generation and you will not leave this retreat until you build capacity sufficient to travel into ascension because very soon if the body of Christ this direction they will look for when women pray and they will ask where are the prophets among you where are those that speak for God where are those that see in the secret and sometimes when you say these are the women and then the people you bring out some of them are widows and then they say uh -uh, this one who is this person you will tell them don't look after the sight of the eyes these people you are seeing are warriors in the spirit sometimes you point at somebody and the person looks very classy and then you say no this one is kana you laugh she's not kana it's just the spirit of excellence and glory but in her womb is a power you don't know the wealth that god have put in the female gender women naturally are seers and when a woman begins to travel her propensities in the spirit cannot be matched cannot be matched that's why when a whole nation is in darkness and god wants to pioneer a new move many times it goes to women the woman told her husband an angel of the lord came to me an angel of the lord came to me the husband was shocked an angel came to you he said yes and he said we'll be with child i shouldn't take any strong drink and no razor should come on his head okay we thank god and then the next time the angel came again i wonder why the angel never went to the man the woman now went to call the husband most of you will begin to bring your families into encounters you will bring your sons into encounters you will bring territories into encounters because you will become an ascended reality the world has many preachers the world has many ministries but there are few watchers there are few people that can bring us the verdict of heaven there are few people that can bring us the testimonies of abba because sometimes we are too busy with ministry sometimes we are too busy with things that we neglect the altar most of you that are looked down upon and they think you are just good enough for a housewife there is a dimension of glory about to break out through your life because you will walk in ascension you will walk in dimension beyond your learning and beyond your education you will walk in dimension beyond the encouragement or the discouragement that you suffer society makes it look as if women should not be at the front forefront because of the degree of our illiteracy culture tradition and customs pioneered by demonic spirits have put and negated women and put them behind but women are rising by the spirit that powers that were born out of ancestry and powers that were born out of human decline in understanding of the purposes of God cannot stop because most of you will begin to function in ascended realities number three when you begin to pray you will enter the realm of stillness the realm of stillness is where you are truly empowered in Exodus 14 it says be still and you will know the salvation of God you will come to a point where your words will not just be many but when you speak you are legislating the purposes of God you will come to a point where your spirit will be so gathered that when God wants to trust out he will begin to speak through you because you have come to a place where you can wield your scepter can I tell you something too many men have served God so there is a competition in the spirit for men but there are few women that have done the biddings of God's spirit when you are calling or studying church history they are just a handful and so there is a lot of vacuum for you to step into something there are lots of mantles awaiting you in the spirit there are lots of graces awaiting you in the spirit it's in stillness that you will know and when you come to that realm of knowing your walls will become a weapon your hands will become a weapon 
your thought will become a weapon and the glory of God will naturally flow through you because women again will receive their dead back to life. There are realms of prayer that we need to get into. We need to journey into stamina. We need to journey into ascension. We need to journey into stillness. Because there are many things depending on you to be carried out. You don't just come for a place or a prayer meeting like this just to be prayed for. You came for a prayer meeting like this to be awoken to the realities that God has put on your inside. There are most of you that have seen great visions. Before you got married, God showed you many visions. But when you got married, you became clogged with family affair. Today, God wants to take you back to that place where you were. That as a single lady, visions of God came to you. Angels ministered to you. But family matters, troubles in homes have made you to lose it. God is restoring you back there. There are most of you here that God has given you exceeding great and precious promises. You saw them. You knew them. You believed them. But when you start giving birth to children, you became distracted. There is an awakening about to take place for you. The things God showed you, family will not stop it. Family will only fuel it so that it can become greater in the name of Jesus. There are most of you here that God has promised that through you, he will activate dimensions. You told your friends, you preached it, but few years ago, a crisis came and those things looked as if they are not possible anymore. As we pray now, your eyes will begin to open and the things God promised you in the secret place, you will begin to see them happen again. The anointings you felt in the past, you will begin to feel those anointings again. The angels that visited you in the past, they will begin to visit you again. The dimensions of God that you carried in the past, you will begin to see them again. Everything that constituted a disadvantage before now, by the Spirit, they will turn out for your good. He said, weeping may endure for the night. He said, joy comes in the morning. He said, our light affliction are but for a moment. They work for us an exceeding eternal weight of glory. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are unseen. You have been distracted by looking at the things which are seen. But right now, the Holy Ghost is taking you back to your encounters. The Holy Ghost is taking you back to your visions. The Holy Ghost is taking you back to the word of the Lord that he gave you many years ago. And by them, you will begin to do business on the altar. Visions are being reinstated. Callings are being reactivated. Graces are being released again. There are most of you here, you were prophetesses and seers. Nothing happened without you seeing it. The moment you close your eyes, God began to speak to you. But you have lost them. You have lost them by cooking in the kitchen. You have lost them by taking care of your daughter and your son. You have lost them by taking care of your husband. But as I speak now, the things that were lost, the things that were forgotten, the things that were aborted, they are beginning to be activated in the name of the Lord Jesus. Wombs are beginning to open in the spirit. Graces and mantles are beginning to rest again in the name of Jesus. There is a particular anointing about to be activated here in this building. It's the anointing of the seer. I'm about to begin to minister in the spirit and will begin to pray very shortly. There are most of you that had dreams and visions and they were direct messages from God. Those are the first set of people the Lord wants to minister to. You had dreams, you had visions and they were direct messages 
from God. But for some of you, for years now, you have lost them. The Lord wants to wash your eyes with eyes off. There are some of you that you breathe in the past, your breath was fasting. You could go 21 days. You could go 40 days. You could go 72 days. You could go 90 days. You had appetite for fasting. You had appetite for intercession. But for years now, you have lost that weapon. You have lost that scepter. The Lord wants to activate burdens in your spirit again. That the graces that you lost, the dimensions that you lost, the scepters that you lost, they are about to be restored. The Holy Ghost is about to begin to minister to people. The Holy Ghost is here now. He's about to put his hand on people. That moment of the Spirit has come. That moment has come. Ushers, it's time to be sensitive. Eyes are beginning to open in the Spirit. Eyes. Eyes. Eyes that see, ears that hear, hearts that understand, hearts that understand, ears that hear, in the hall, on the internet, eyes that see, ears that hear, hearts that understand. Can you go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost? Pray in the Holy Ghost. My emphasis this morning is not just to preach. It's to provoke activations. It's to provoke restoration. It's to provoke the release of the Spirit. Go ahead and pray in the Holy Ghost. Go ahead and pray. The moment is here. Pray in the Holy Ghost. I didn't come this morning to preach. I came to activate graces. I came to provoke restoration. The things you have lost. The things you have lost. Some of it were for legitimate reasons. But the Lord comes to restore. The Lord comes to reactivate. The Lord comes to reactivate. We have just, we have less than 50 minutes. We are going to pray now. I want us to pray violently for 30 minutes. I didn't come to preach. I just came to tell you that there will be restorations because you have lost a lot of things. There are weapons, there are mantles, there are graces, there are scepters that have been lost that God wants to restore. So lift your voice and pray in the Holy Ghost now. Pray in the Holy Ghost now. Pray now like a desperate person. A person that doesn't want to walk out of here until something rests upon you. Thank you so much for staying to the end of this video. I know you've been greatly blessed by this powerful message. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video. If you have any question or any comment, whatever that is portraying you, I need an answer to. Please use the comment box below. Thank you and God bless you. I will see you in the next video.